everyone. Today we're looking at chemical monitoring and management and we're looking at the topic monitoring and managing chemical reaction. In this topic we will look at why do we need to monitor different sort of chemical reactions. So first of all let's look at what do we need to monitor. It is important to monitor conditions under which a chemical reaction is being conducted such as the temperature and the pressure. It is important to monitor the amount of product being formed to achieve economic consideration. And this may include temperature, pressure, and catalyst. So you want to uh, measure or uh, want to monitor these three things most importantly. That is the temperature of the reaction, the pressure under which it is conducted, and the type of catalyst used. So let's look at the economic con uh, consideration. So the economic consideration will include the production of unwanted byproducts is minimized. So you don't want too much of waste to be produced because you want most of your reactants to be converted into useful products. So desired product is maximized. And no pollutants are being produced from the reaction itself or impurities in the starting material. The reaction proceeds to completion and unfavorable equilibrium is avoided. So you want to look at uh, that there is no impurities in the final product. So if the reaction is being used to generate energy, you want to generate the maximum amount of energy that is possible. <clears throat> now let's look at a type of reaction that we need to monitor. For example, combustion. Now what is combustion? A combustion is a chemical reaction in which oxygen is used and energy is produced. As you can see in this animation, Oxygen, heat and fuel is used and they produce energy. So the products we get are carbon dioxide, water and heat and light energy. So this is what combustion is. Now combustion reactions are used to generate energy in many industries. So it's a very important uh, chemical reaction uh, for our in chemical industries and all the optimum conditions for the combustion have been determined by research. So you want to carry out this reaction in optimum conditions to ensure that the products you need are produced in the right amount. So monitoring combustion, once the optimal condi com uh, conditions have been established, chemists monitor the combustion process using suitable automatic sensors, instrumental and analytical techniques. And so what are the conditions for complete combustion? Combustion of hydrocarbon is only complete when there is plentiful of oxygen. As we can see, oxygen is one of the main reactants involved in this reaction. So we want to ensure that we have enough oxygen so that we can produce enough of the product that we want. So what products does complete combustion produce? They produce carbon dioxide and water. And also, the reaction for an octane, complete combustion of octane, includes two molecules of octane, which is burned in 25 molecules of oxygen, will give 16 molecules of carbon dioxide and 18 molecules of water. So as you can see, complete combustion of octane produces carbon dioxide and water. And carbon dioxide is the main product that we want. Now incomplete combustion, as the name suggests, incomplete combustion is where the fuel burns in restricted oxygen supply. So you do not have enough oxygen involved. Now if one of the reactants is re reduced, uh, since one of the reactants is reduced, therefore the product form will also be reduced. And why is that? It's because a mixture of products form, such as carbon soot, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and water. As you can see, in incomplete combustion, you get two different products such as soot and carbon monoxide. So all of the energy and all of the reactants is not only used to produce carbon dioxide. Therefore, the reaction is incomplete. So let's look at a reaction for incomplete combustion. So if two molecules of octane is used to burn in 20 molecules of uh, oxygen, we only produce eight molecules of carbon dioxide six molecules of carbon monoxide, two molecules of carbon, and 18 molecules of water. As you would remember, for complete combustion, we produce 16 molecules of carbon dioxide. But in incomplete combustion, this is reduced to eight molecules. Hence, incomplete combustion, because it uses less oxygen, the amount of product is also decreased because some of the reactant is converted to other products that we do not want. 
So we need to monitor our chemical reaction to ensure that the product formed is what we want and in the right amount. So to achieve maximum energy output combust in a combustion of fuel, the conditions that we need to monitor are the composition of the reactant and the product gases to ensure that there are no impurities. Also, to do this and to monitor this condition, we need to use temperature and pressure gauges that are connected to combustion and exhaust chambers. And we need to use oxygen sensors to monitor the oxygen levels in the exhaust manifold before exhaust gases enter the catalytic converter. And Again, oxygen sensors are used to ensure that complete combustion occurs so that we have enough oxygen to produce enough carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and carbon soot are not produced. We can also use automatic batch sampling to analyze the chemical composition of the reactants and the exhaust gases. Now this brings us to the end of this section. So we have seen that monitoring a chemical reaction is very important because for example in combustion you can see if you don't monitor the level of oxygen, chemicals such as carbon monoxide and carbon soot will be produced that we do not want. And we want all of the reactants to go and form uh, carbon dioxide. So if we monitor the reaction with the techniques um, uh, shown in um, the um, slides, then uh, we can actually uh, ensure that the amount of carbon dioxide produced is um, useful. Now let's look at the questions to test your knowledge. Question 11 asks us, which of the following is always produced during combustion of fossil fuel? Now carbon soot, carbon soot is only produced in incomplete combustion and they are not produced in all type of combustion reactions, so B is not the answer. What about sulfur dioxide? Now in this question they do not mention whether any sulfur reactants were used, so this is not the answer because it, not, it is not necessary that all combustion reactions produce sulfur dioxide. What about carbon dioxide? Now carbon dioxide is only produced in the right amount in complete uh, combustion. In incomplete combustion, carbon dioxide may not be produced as carbon monoxide and carbon soot are produced. So D is not the answer as well. Hence our answer is water. As you would realize, water is one of the products that is formed in all types of combustion, that is incomplete combustion and complete combustion. So A is the correct answer. Let's move on to question 12. Question 12 asks us, what causes incomplete combustion? So as you would already know, if you have two less of one of the reactants, which is oxygen, the amount of um, product will also be reduced because too few oxygen molecules will be colliding with each other to form the fuel molecule or with the fuel molecule. And let's write the equation for incomplete combustion of methane. So this will include two molecules of methane plus three molecules of oxygen gives two molecules of carbon monoxide and four molecules of water. Now this is an incomplete combustion uh, equation because as you can see no carbon dioxide was produced at all only, and only three molecules of oxygen was used and hence this is a correct equation for incomplete combustion of methane. Now let's move on to question 13. Question 13 tells us in the internal combustion engine of a motor car, octane undergoes both complete and incomplete combustion. And part A tells us to write both of the equations for octane undergoing complete and incomplete combustion. So for complete combustion, you can see two molecules of octane will react with 25 molecules of oxygen to produce 16 molecules of carbon dioxide and 18 molecules of carbon dioxide. Now, uh, 18 molecules of water. Now with incomplete combustion, obviously the um, amount of reactant which is oxygen will be reduced. So again if we use the same amount of uh, octane which is two molecules, but now this time only with 12 and a half molecule of oxygen, we will get seven molecules of carbon dioxide, 18 molecules of water and nine molecules of carbon. Now here you can see that because we have reduced the amount of oxygen, the amount of carbon dioxide is also reduced in our products. Therefore, you can see that it is important to monitor chemical reactions because the product will be reduced eventually. Now B asks us 
that using the equations from A, so these two equations, explain what causes octane to undergo incomplete combustion. And the only thing different in the reactants in this reaction is the amount of oxygen. Complete combustion uses 25 molecules of oxygen, whereas incomplete combustion uses only 12 and a half molecules of oxygen. Hence, the answer is an insufficient amount of oxygen leads to incomplete combustion. Now let's move on to question 14. Why is partial or incomplete combustion a problem for the environment? Now we know that the products for incomplete combustion is carbon soot and carbon monoxide. Now let's see why are these harmful for the environment? Because first of all, carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas. Now why is it a poisonous gas? Carbon monoxide forms strong bond with hemoglobin in the blood than an oxygen, oxygen does and hence prevents oxygen reaching vital organs like the brain. So if some of the carbon monoxide binds quickly to hemoglobin, there is not enough space for all of the oxygen to bind, uh, uh, all of the oxygen to bind to hemoglobin and hence less amount of oxygen will be delivered to different parts of your body. And also carbon soot that is produced in incomplete combustion causes visual and particular types of pollution such as soot. It can also cause respiratory and health problems. Now let's move on to question 15. Question 15 asks us how does the heat of combustion compare with the heat given out when partial combustion occurs and why is partial combustion a problem for energy consumers? So as we already know less heat is given out per gram of the fuel when partial combustion occurs rather than complete combustion. This is because the amount of reactant used would be less, hence the amount of product will drop as well. This is a problem for energy consumers as a partial combustion is an inefficient use of fuel which may be costly or in short supply. So the energy consumers are looking at producing the maximum amount of energy possible. Hence, if the combustion is not complete, the less amount of energy will be produced and that will definitely be a problem for energy consumers. This brings us to the end of the question session. And in this um, topic, we actually looked at why is it important to monitor uh, reactions and we looked at combustion in depth. And you can already see that if we do not monitor a combustion reaction, it can become incomplete as less molecules of oxygen can be involved and this will pro uh, produce harmful products such as carbon monoxide and carbon soot.